Good afternoon and welcome to WNTV at 1. I'm Dan Mwangi. Now we begin in Kangema where the MP Muturi Kigano has unveiled a new team of the Constituency Development Fund Committee after dismissing all former members of the Kangema CDF team. The legislator cautioned the nine-member committee against engaging in corrupt deals, saying all funds should be prudently utilized. The MP castigated the former committee for initiating projects which were of no benefit to the community. Kigano observed that CDF will give priority to education, indicating that more funds will be channeled to improve schools' infrastructure. Welcome there. So our main agenda in the CDF in Kangema is facilitating in making the best infrastructure in nature of classrooms, abrusion blocks, staff uh, housing, classroom infrastructure in form of desks. Now, interior acting, that's acting Interior says Fred Matiangi says that his ministry is reviewing the structure of the Traffic Police Department to tame rogue officers as one of the measures to curb accidents on the roads. Now, he says the Interior Ministry will also re-register all driving schools afresh with prescribed regulations by NTSA. Now, Matiangi says that 127 police officers who were recently removed from the Traffic Department got court orders reinstating them. And this, this brings to the fore the conversation on road safety and one of the reasons why the, the CS the acting CS in this case was talking about is, is saying that there needs to be re-registration re of uh, driving schools because he's saying that they're churning out half the uh, drivers and that means that that is contributing to the high number of deaths we're seeing on the road and number of accidents and we shall be getting that story in full as when we uh, when we get it later on in this bulletin now moving on former Lamu governor Issa Timami says that Lamu East and Lamu West deputy returning officers illegally swapped constituencies ahead of the August election Timami insists that the elections for gubernatorial seat in Lamu were not free and fair accusing IEBC officials of being impartial Former Governor Issa Timami was testifying during the hearing of a petition he filed challenging the victory of Ahintoa told High Court Judge Lady Justice Dora Chepkwon who is sitting in Malindi for the election petition that the election was not administered in an impartial and neutral manner. Timami particularly took issue with the current Deputy Governor Abdul Hakim, a former registration officer and IEBC constituency returning officer of being behind the scheme to unseat him using his former colleagues at IEBC. Timami said Abdul Hakim influenced to have his former workmate Intai Tataveta to be brought in as the returning officer for Lamu East, adding that his assistant was also a returning officer in Lamu West. To set up the machinery, have his people run the election. To have his people run the election. Asked whether he had evidence, Timami said some of his agents were thrown out of the Tarling Center. Further, he said there were pre-marked ballot papers marked in favor of specific candidates. As part of the scheme, the former governor said one of his names, which is famous in Lamu, Timami, was missing, adding that only Issa Abdallah was in the ballot paper. The former governor said names of voters, particularly in villages which are his strongholds, were missing in the kit. Timami said most of those rejected votes were also from his strongholds, adding that there was no validation. Tuaha, who was present in court, is represented by lawyer Maurice Kilonzo, while IEBC is represented by Peter Munyu. In the August polls, Tuaha was declared the winner of the gubernatorial race with 22,969 votes against Timami's 22,848 votes. Harambe Stars will receive 50 million shillings from the government if they qualify for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations at AFCON. Speaking during a breakfast treat for the national men's football team at his current residence, Deputy President William Ruto gave the team 5 million shillings cash and also announced that President Uhuru Kenyatta has authorized the sports ministry to issue an additional 10 million shillings for the team's recent Sekafa Cine Challenge Cup success. Seth Olale attended the event. <laughs> Each Hadambesas player who featured in the just concluded Sekafa Senior Challenge Cup is set to receive approximately 600,000 shillings as reward for winning the regional title last Sunday. This is after Deputy President fulfilled his pledge by giving 5 million shillings in cash to the team at a breakfast treat held at the DP's official residence in Karen. The team will receive an additional 10 million shillings within a week through the sports ministry following an order from President Uhuru Kenyatta. You guys made all of us across Kenya, from all communities, 
from all faiths, all political affiliations. You made us one nation, one proud Kenyan. Furthermore, the national men's football outfit has been promised 50 million shillings if they qualify for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations that will be held in Cameroon. Kenya, which lost to Sierra Leone in the opening fixture of the qualifiers, lies third in Group F that also features Ghana and Ethiopia. We must qualify and we must win. We must make history. And I am confident that this is the team that will make history. Harambe Sazi is also set to have a brand new bus in two weeks' time, courtesy of the government. We are serious and we are committed to what you are doing, to the talent that you have shown. And we appreciate the fact that you have put in many hours, you've put in your mind, you've put in all effort to give us this win. The DP also announced that the government will unveil eight upgraded stadia in April next year, including now stadium with five more expected to be completed by end of 2018. However, the deputy president announced that the government has not managed to persuade Mombasa and Kisumu County governments towards upgrading their stadia. And it is because we believe Kenya has demonstrated that we are a great sporting nation. We have made a mark in the world as... Gluto insisted that the government will honor all heroic sportsmen and women through a one billion rewarding scheme a year, which the government has set aside in the annual budget. The president made it public that we are going to recognize all our sportsmen and women when they do well for the country. Both Football Kenya Federation and the players welcomed the government's commitment. Nice to hear these promises. Uh, I think uh, we have been open uh, many doors. And I told also the president uh, when I came to Kenya that we need everybody on board. Uh, if you want to really achieve some uh, results, you need everybody on board because football, like I said, and I will repeat it, is details uh, and to, to make the details sure. There is, uh, you need the money, you need the support. So. Positivity is what he needs. He said, if you don't have these people behind you, you can't win. So you get the government, you get the sponsors, and you get the fans. There's only one way, Cup of Nations, World Cup. Earlier on, sports betting firm Sportpesa gave 3 million shillings and intends to offer the same amount as incentive for every qualifier match. Harambe Stars also received a shopping voucher worth 10,000 shillings from retailers Tusky Supermarket for each of the 37 members of the playing unit and technical bench. With goodies coming by, work is now clearly cut out for the national team who face Ghana in the Africa Cup of Nations next qualifier in 2018, September. Seth Olale, NTV, at the Deputy President's residence, Karen. Once again, congratulations to the stars and Nick Mwendwa said we're going to the World Cup. Let's hope for the best. Now, as Kenyans travel to various destinations for their Christmas holidays, those planning to visit various game reserves, lodges and campsites around the Isiolo, Samburu, Laikipia ecosystem have been promised a safe festive season at the facilities. This follows the Kenya Wildlife Service, the General Service Unit, Kenya Forest Service and Conservancy Wardens and Rangers committing to partner in order to ensure that visitors are not subjected to any security threat during the festive season and even after. Afterwards. Addressing journalists after an interagency collaborative meeting convened by Isiolo County Tourism Department, the officer in charge of KWS in Isiolo, Peter Bote, said that the security meeting was about safety and security of visitors. He says that the various security organs had resolved to conduct joint operations within the parks and around lodges, adding that this would continue even after the holiday season. Bote noted that during the meeting, the officers had already identified eight hotspots, adding that numerous security patrols would be conducted as well as engagements with the local community to ensure that nothing goes wrong. And you have agreed that you are going to have uh, joint patrols immediately to ensure that the entire area is safe and our visitors will be safe. These patrols will even continue even after the festive season. Other challenges we have discussed are the livestock incursion in the reserves and the charcoal burning, which 
We are going to form barasas through the, all the stakeholders and the communities to create an awareness on why we need to maintain our natural habitat. Let's go down south and as the African National Congress ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa settles into his new position, questions about how, as to how he will deal with the predecessor Jacob Zuma, that's President Jacob Zuma, arise. Now, political analysts have previously predicted that Ramaphosa would recall Zuma if, he, if, if he's elected ANC president, but that is unlikely to happen. Ramaphosa was elected president of his party on Monday night with 2,449 votes to 2,261 for Dalamini Zuma. Political analysts have previously said that Ramaphosa would recall Zuma if he's elected ANC president, but that prediction now seems unlikely, as half of the ANC's new top six is talked with staunch supporters of the president. Questions are also being asked about whether Ramaphosa will be able to push for an inquiry into the state capture, seeing that some of the party's top officials have defended the Gupta family. Ramaphosa's ability has been apparent for decades. Whenever Nelson Mandela needed a breakthrough in talks to end apartheid, he turned to the then trade union leader with a reputation as a tenacious negotiator. Using skills honed in paying disputes with mining bosses, Ramaphosa steered those talks to a successful conclusion, allowing Mandela to sweep to power in 1994 as head of the victorious ANC. South Africa's first democratic vote. Mandela wanted Ramaphosa's to be his heir, but was pressured into picking Thambo Mbeki by a group of NC leaders who had fought apartheid from exile. It has taken more than two decades for Ramaphosa to get another chance to run the country. A lawyer with an easygoing manner, Ramaphosa has vowed to fight corruption and to revitalize an economy that has slowed to a near standstill under Zuma's scandal plague leadership. To his supporters, Ramaphosa's business success makes him well suited to task overturning around an economy grappling with 28% unemployment and credit rating downgrades. His message went down well with foreign investors and ANC members who thought Zuma's handling of the economy could cost the party dearly in 2019 parliamentary elections. The country is now waiting to see whether he will deliver on his promises of a clean government different that of his predecessor. Let's move closer home just a bit at least. The Zimbabwe Defense Forces, that's ZDF, announced the end of their military intervention that culminated in the resignation of former President Robert Mugabe last month. The ZDF Army Commander Philip Valerio Sibanda told a press conference that police have now resumed their normal duties following the end of the operation codenamed Operation Restore Legacy. The military said it launched the operation on November 13th with the aim of removing criminals that were surrounding the former president. The intervention eventually culminated in the resignation of Mugabe on November 21st. Sibanda said some of the criminals had been accounted for while others had skipped the country. Critical developments, normalcy has now returned to our country. It is for this reason that as your defense and security services we announce the end of Operation Restore Legacy today. He urged the nation to remain vigilant and report any suspicious objects and individuals, saying some members of the G40 faction that was aligned to former First Lady Grace Mugabe were bent on harming peace and tranquility in the country. It is our hope as your defense and security services that our people will remain united, they will shun corruption, they will be law-abiding, and focus on working hard for the development of our country. The ZDF also urged the police to discharge their duties in accordance with a constitutional mandate and members of the public to respect, support, and cooperate with the police. In the meantime, the head of Zimbabwe's military who led the de facto coup that ended Mugabe's 37-year rule last month is set to retire paving the way for his widely anticipated appointment as vice president. Constantino Chiwenga is the top contender to become a deputy to the new president, 
Emerson Munagagwa, one of two posts Munagagwa has promised to fill in the next few days. The government also announced the retirement of police chief Agostin Chihuri, a deeply unpopular Mugabe loyalist who, it said, has been on leave since December 15th. Chihuri was accused by rights groups of presiding over vicious crackdowns on dissent and popular protest in the 18 months before Mugabe's ouster. The the Kiambu County government to dissuade it from adopting the law passed by the county assembly that seeks to restrict its employment opportunities at least 70 percent to the locals. Now through the chairperson Francis Ole Caparo, the commission says the passage of the law is retrogressive and dictatorial. NCIC says that if the county goes ahead to implement the same then they will go to court to have the law struck out. Every leader in this country whether the national level or the county level should strive to bring Kenyans together and to make it safe and peaceful for Kenyans to seek employment and anywhere in this country and work anywhere in this country without being discriminated against. I think for the county government of Kiambu, they have retrogressed. I have had occasion to praise that same county government. I think last year, either last year or the year before, in a progressive move, the county government of Kiambu put uh, an advertisement in the newspaper. We stated, among other things, that if you are a Kikuyu, you need not apply for this position. And we, it, it received a lot of praise. This current move is direct retrogression. And I'm sure there are other counties doing exactly the same, but without fanfare. Leaders from the Mount Kenya region are daring opposition leader Raila Odinga to go ahead with his swearing-in plans, but to be ready to face the consequences. They also want speakers and members of the county assemblies in the region not to allow the motion of the People's Assembly to sail through. They were speaking during the battle of Peter Weru, an MCA who collapsed and died while delivering a speech during the Jamuri Day celebrations at Ndodoine Primary School in Madira constituency. NTV's Melita Oletengues tells us more. The lawmakers led by Kieni MP Kanini Kega said that they will no longer worry about plans by NASA leaders to swear in Odinga, saying that the Attorney General Gidu Mugai has already warned that swearing in Odinga would amount to an illegality. Mtoto wa kiwembe mpe. Wacha sasa tumutafutie hiyo bibilia. Tumpatie, aape, vili anataka kuwapa, lakini ya jue kwamba kuna rais, anaitwa uhuru, moigai, kenyata. Kama ulishiku, ulishindu wa kwa hile mashidano. Ni maneno gani ingine urakuja kutuwapia hapa? We are telling Laila in no uncertain terms that we are not going to entertain people's assembly. In the meantime, Nyeri Women Representative Rahab Mukami raised concern over the increasing number of road accidents. She called upon the NTSA to take appropriate measures to prevent the accidents. Watu wa personal vehicles, traffic, wakuja washikane pamoja wajwe ni kwa nini watu wana kufa sana. Si mmeona watu wame kufa sana? Kama watajua, kama all the drivers watarudishwa training, ama ninini itaenderea. The leaders further challenged those who lost in the August 8th elections to accept defeat and withdraw petitions at the courts. Ole Tenges, NTV.